So this is our traditional live Q&A that we run twice a month. One time a month, usually it's dedicated to a particular topic. Today, we're going to be talking about leaky gut syndrome or increased intestinal permeability. And another session will be just live Q&A. Ask Dr. Elena anything you want to know about, um, about functional medicine. So that's, that's where we stand today. So and today's agenda will be... Um, we'll be discussing what is it? What is this leaky gut phenomenon uh, that takes so much of attention in the medical literature lately? And where is it coming from? How does it happen? What are the causes or contributing factors of this condition? Uh, we also will talk about symptoms and complications of leaky gut. How do we, that we see that sometimes uh, they are beyond the gut uh, level. So there might be on um, in some other tissues, a joint, so brain. And so we'll discuss the typical case scenario of patients who come and when I suspect leaky gut and how the functional medicine therapies are different from conventional medicine approach. And I'll present you briefly our um, GI health program that we run in the program. So this is uh, actually a nice picture of uh, our gut lining. So as you can see, the gut is the gateway to your health. And it's true that gut is that interface. And our gut lining is that interface between the outside world and uh, inside of our body. And there's a lot of interesting things happening on that gut lining level, on that gut barrier level. And as you probably know, that that gut barrier is exists only because there's a tightly regulated junctions between the intestinal cell. So believe it or not, it's actually a single cell layer that separates us from our outside world, but it's tightly regulated. And maintenance of the healthy barrier really depends on these tight junctions that are presented on this uh, picture on the left, uh, as you can see, these tight connections between the cells, they are very strong, but they are also pretty vulnerable to their um, variety of the factors that we expose to in our gut lining. And this tight junction keep our intestinal lining semi-permanent or selectively, perm permanent, uh, se selectively permeable. So it keeps the harmful substances from the passing into the bloodstream, but allows our nutrients to be absorbed in a very systematic manner. So it's really important for our nutrients to pass through the gut through this uh, specific channels. And maintenance of this tight junction is actually a key to keep our gut barrier integrity. So what is this leaky gut syndrome? So when this tight junction that I presented on the previous uh, slide are broken down, uh, their intestinal uh, wall becomes much looser and it becomes leaky. So the intestinal content starts leaking or sipping through the intestinal wall into the bloodstream. And on this picture right here, you can see how these tight junctions are not there anymore. This is a typical... Um, a picture that explains how uh, their intestinal content that is right on the top in the form of this uh, either bugs or uh, undigested food particles start sipping through. And uh, th this is actually unwanted substances, as you can understand, and they're ending up in our bloodstream. And those substances can be not just pathogens or microbes that are even the normal microbes for us, but also um, undigested food particles, and of course, toxins that come with our food. Um, we are all exposed to a tremendous amount of uh, pesticides and um, herbicides that if we eat non-organic, and many of us who eat out at least once or twice a week, will be exposed to those non-organic uh, foods, and therefore to things like glyphosate or uh, pesticide that is dramatically increases their risk of leaky gut and uh, end up in our bloodstream. So what are the symptoms of leaky gut? Uh, a lot of those symptoms can be definitely uh, related to digestive system. So gas, bloating, diarrhea, for some people it could be constipation, 
Uh, but also you can see some distant symptoms of leaky gut. So brain fog and difficulty of concentrating. Why? Because very similar lining that is creates the gut barrier. We have a similar barrier in our blood brain barrier. And the factors that cause leaky gut sometimes can cause a leaky brain. And think about all those toxins that are can be sipping through our um, broken barriers in the gastrointestinal tract. All of that is ending up in our blood. And the blood inevitably ends up in our brain. And therefore, we get that brain fog, difficulty, difficulty concentrating, difficulty in attention, mood swings. It can also can cause some hormonal imbalances. And of course, food sensitivity is another very big symptom of a, as a sign of the leaky gut. Also, a lot of people will come with their uh, skin condition, acne, rosacea, eczema, all those things tightly related to their broken uh, intestinal barriers or integrity of intestinal barriers are compromised. And as a result, we get those symptoms on the skin. But just also chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, aches, pains, um, any chronic condition will have leaky gut as a, one of their most important components. What's causing leaky gut? As I mentioned already, all of us get leaky gut, but it doesn't usually last that long. So poor nutrition certainly can cause a leaky gut. Our standard American diet, SED diet, with the lack of vegetables, lots of unhealthy fats, processed food, all of those factors can potentiate and prolong the healing of leaky gut. Prolonged stress always is a part of their, um, uh, of their leaky gut. And as you understand, if we have a short living stress, the leaky gut can be repaired pretty quickly. But if it's a prolonged stress, you know, that many people experience now, uh, due to their being overburdened with the work, with their uh, responsibilities, screen time. Our time is uh, becoming so valuable. We're constantly under pressure. So that stress is part of their factors that can keep their leaky gut running. Certain medications, for example, most commonly used non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication, what we think is harmless aspirin or Advil or Motrin, those anti-inflammatory medications are causing a lot of uh, um, uh, break, breaking of the integrity of the gastrointestinal tract. Antibiotics, of course, is a big one because they're not just breaking down their intestinal barrier, but they uh, adversely affect our microbiome and causing that imbalance of the gut microbiome that will potentiate and um, make the leaky gut last longer. And of course, the toxins I mentioned already, glyphosates and other toxins that come with our food will be all of those, those factors uh, probably present in everybody's life to some extent, right? We cannot avoid uh, being stress-free or uh, being away from uh, toxins. So all of those factors will cause that inflammation that will keep leaky gut happening and lasting longer. And unfortunately, unfortunately, we know that if leaky gut stays unattended uh, or we cannot support the gut to heal fast, it will create the grounds for developing autoimmunity. How does it happen? Well, the particles, as you can see, the particle from their uh, gastrointestinal tract will escape into the bloodstream and will cause systemic inflammation in the body. At the same time, our immune system recognizes those particles as, they, as their foes. They're not, they're not wanted pieces of their proteins that are present in the bloodstream. And it starts developing antibodies against those particles. And um, at some point, immune systems start making mistakes and it creates uh, antibodies against our own tissue. So our own tissue becomes uh, that trigger for harmful order, uh, order antibodies being produced and the tissue be start being destroyed. One very common example is 
there are um, a thyroid antibodies that many people have and they don't even know about that. But this is one of the examples. So the further complications likely can happen if autoimmunity becomes unchecked and if we're not addressing leaky gut on a regular basis. And as we know, statistically, anyone with one autoimmune condition has 10 times higher risk of developing a second uh, autoimmune condition. And I do have patients in the practice who will present with three, four different autoimmune conditions, and they don't even know about that. So and definitely, we always start with addressing the leaky gut and going back to the gut is one of the things and this is actually a really great picture that i use in my practice all the time that explains that on the left side you see this healthy uh nice mucosa of the gastrointestinal barrier where the cells are tightly connected to each other and all the nutrients like vitamin c vitamin d iron b vitamins magnesium all that greatness that gives us energy and keep our health body healthy travels through their specific channels. And in case of the inflammation, either because of their um, uh, their stress or certain medications or infections or some food particles will create inflammation on the gut level, on the gut, gut lining level, and these tight junctions are broken down. And now all this intestinal consent starts sipping through the intestinal wall, irritating and aggravating our immune system that start reacting to those particles with production of antibodies. And as a result, we start getting this negative food reaction. It creates this vicious cycle. Now you are eating the food that you have antibodies and they create more inflammation in your gut line. Also at the same time, our immune system becomes so irritated that we start developing allergies asthma, eczema, right? And at the same time, we are in the state of nutritional malabsorption, meaning we don't even have the building blocks and um, nutrients that are necessary to repair this inflamed intestinal barrier. And that, at the same time, if it stays unchecked for a long period of time, it will increase our risk to develop autoimmune disorders. Hashimoto thyroiditis or autoimmune thyroid disease is probably being one, one of the most common, but we see more and more of development of multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, and many other uh, autoimmune illnesses. So what can we do to prevent this from worsening or how can we heal and repair this leaky gut? Well, this is where we are coming back to the 5R approach to treat the gut. And number one is, of course, removing. Removing the triggers that can cause this leaky gut situation or, unhealth, or inflammation on the gut level. It could be poor nutrition, poor lifestyle, eating processed food, or eating, continue to eat food that we are reactive to. Harmful microorganisms, removing toxins, removing some glyphosate and pesticides in our food, removing harmful particles, and then replacing, restoring digestive function with uh, enzymes and hydrochloric acid that we all drop after 40 years of old age and actually observe it now younger and younger people have an insufficient amount of hydrochloric acid that is essential to sterilizing our food and digesting our food. So we need to restore and this digestive function by replacing those necessary elements of healthy digestive process. We need to reestablish their microbiome, healthy microbiome uh, with probiotics and the food for probiotics to survive prebiotics. So we give pre and probiotics. And at the same time, we're removing all those bad bacteria, either parasites or uh, bacteria that are overgrowing because there's no uh, balance in the microflora. We need to repair that healing, the heal and repair the gut barriers that are essential nutrients, your amino acids, your minerals that are so important. 
And I have to tell you, if our body is nutritionally supported and, and we have enough nutrients, we can always repair that leaky gut within hours. So it doesn't last long. And then finally, rebalancing the gut and brain for proper communication. Because if we're in constant stress, either conscious or subconscious, that will drive their inflammation in the gut level. That's why we teach our patients in, in this practice how to do their uh, balancing of the mind-body connection. How, one of the techniques we use is the heart math. Many of my patients here probably experienced that already, but if you not, please make sure you learn how you can do it yourself. Either you're at work and you have five minutes break, or you're at the end of your day and you want to rebalance and increase your resilience to stress. To stress. This is how heart math is really uh, indispensable. And of course, again, one of the pathways that is really important to understand that chronic systemic inflammation that can be happening from the leaky gut will increase even more unnecessary stress in your brain. And that, through the loop of the nerves, will create vagus nerve dysfunction. Vagus nerve is one of the most important nerves that is responsible in regulating our digestion and important in many other functions in the body. It's one of the longest nerves that runs from the brain stem all the way down to our rectum. So if the nerve, a vagus nerve is not functioning well due to the stress and inflammation in the brain, the motility of our gut is suffering, so people will present either with diarrhea or just an opposite constipation. Our gastric emptying will be delayed, meaning everything is stuck. And as a result, then bacteria will be overgrowing in the places where it's not supposed to be. And that's where the condition like small intestine bacterial overgrowth or SIBO will start happening. So all of that is actually create this loop as you can see that if the gastric, the gastric motility and colonic motility are impaired, that creates, alters the gut pH, creates dysbiosis or overgrowth of the wrong bacteria in the wrong place. And that becomes this perpetual fact, factor for leaky gut or membranes permeability. And that links again to the in chronic continuous inflammation. So what do we see in the practice here, in, in my functional medicine practice? This is the very typical case. People come with um, uh, either they're overweight or they have a poor diet or poor eating habits. We have less and less of those because uh, the information is available for everyone. And I would say that people who come to us already educated and motivated, um, they frequently feel tired or irritable. They can't sleep well. Many of people come with the complaints of the gut pain, uh, bloating, and itchy skin. And then, of course, in the in case of the conventional approach, people come with this multitude of the symptoms. Gut pain, especially after eating, often irritable, weak, sluggish, feeling very tired, have the skin issues either in the form of hives or eczema or just itchy skin after meals. They have a um, eating daily processed or low fiber food with the high fats, trans fats or unhealthy inflammatory fats or the diet with the full of uh, sugar content. Or these people may come with the chronic infections uh, that are very conveniently treated with antibiotics only only those antibiotics work only temporarily. Now, these people need to repeat antibiotics, either for chronic urinary tract infection or chronic sinusitis or chronic bronchitis or chronic infections. So, and then as a result, they have now constipation or irregular bowel habits. And usually these people have sedentary lifestyle with a general lack of exercise. So this patient, this typical patient in 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 in, in, in in the conventional setting, comes to the primary care doctor and primary care says, well, okay, well, let's run the test. They do some blood tests. They do some abdominal imaging. Maybe they even send this patient to their um, 
gastrointestinal specialist, GI specialist, and often not finding much. They say, well, maybe it's your um, depression. Let's put you on their antidepressant medication, or let's try antibiotics. Maybe it's uh, it will help you. Or if you're chronically constipated, here's the Miralax. Have it and take it, but there's no exit strategy, right? Because people are bound to the laxative for years to come. Uh, or, oh, your skin is itching. Um, let's just give you some uh, antihistamines for skin itching. And this is kind of what we see, and that's what patients will come with. But how is functional medicine different? When patients would come to my practice, they would have to fill out probably 59 questions um, survey that I will review before I meet with the patient. So I know about my clients more than their parents do, as I say. And uh, because this is what I need to figure out, what is the leading cause, a leading root cause factor in their not feeling well on their chronic condition. So we do get detailed history, but also we do a very detailed nutritional exam, exam that not just looking at their skin and listening to the heart and the lungs and feeling the abdomen, but we also look, I'm also looking at their detailed dental exam because our mouth is, has, says a lot about our health and it also can influence our health in so, in, in so many ways. And then at the end of that thorough history and physical, I do order some laboratory tests. Some of those tests can be conventional labs that uh, you can see in the conventional setting, like your thyroid, but our thyroid panel will be probably a little bit more detailed. Instead of three markers or two markers, I will probably check 16 markers because I want to know everything in, uh, in this complex process of their hormonal production. And also, of course, we're going to be ordering some um, stool tests, but also very specific blood tests that will look at the food sensitivity. Some people will do great on just elimination diet, but some people can not manage that. And so we'll just do the food sensitivity test that will show us what foods you need to stay away from for the next six months. Because every time you eat this food, it will inflame you and it will cause and perpetuate leaky gut syndrome. And we use uh, different food sensitivity tests. Some of them could be based on antibodies testing and some of them will be looking at the immune cells response. How do the, your lymphocytes respond to a variety of the foods? And that's where we uh, uh, determine what food you need to stay away from. And then of course, how do we treat our patients with leaky gut? Of course, it's nutritional and lifestyle recommendations. The many of us would need the nutritional support. Either we have leaky gut or we don't because we're all exposed to stress. You saw those factors, stress, food sensitivities, medications, infections. So glutamine is one of the most important amino acids to heal that leaky gut, as well as some other herbal preparation like DGL or uh, derivative of licorice or aloe vera. Those are the will build and soothe the gut barriers. Probiotics, multispectrum probiotics usually. Uh, serum derived bovine immunoglobulins. So we're just borrowing immunoglobulins from their uh, animals to bind those harmful pieces of their uh, bacteria that we call LPS, lipopolysaccharides, and they will diminish the burden of our body with those toxic substances. And of course, uh, prescription of anti-inflammatory phytonutrients or functional foods like turmeric, propolis, quercetin, and don't forget digestive enzymes and stomach acid, but also lifestyle recommendations. All of our clients will get a very detailed nutritional counseling on the prescribed nutritional plan. Um, we always recommend to eat more whole foods instead of processed foods. Um, yes, we do teach our patients how to cook at home and how to um, cook something quickly, and but eat less outside uh, or choose your restaurants uh, wisely. And of course, limiting antibiotics use. Uh, we're approaching a cold season. 
Uh, please don't miss our lecture on how to protect yourself from cold and flu, how to keep yourself healthy, and how to avoid antibiotics as much as possible. Because single antibiotic use not just going to cause leaky gut, but it will cause microbial imbalances that you would have to pay for two years. The studies that show that single use of antibiotics will increase people, some susceptible individuals, um, uh, immune and um, insulin resistance up to two years. So the risk of developing diabetes or insulin resistance will be higher up to two years after single antibiotic course. So please make sure you use antibiotics sparingly. It's not a piece of candy and it shouldn't be prescribed um, so, so widely for things like viral infection, right? And of course, we're living in a very stressed world Make sure you develop your own technique that helps you to manage your stress. Either it's meditation, either it's prayer, it's deep breathing, or attending our group sessions with a heart math where you can learn a very simple technique that will develop the brain path in, um, in develop the path in your brain to get you into that comfortable space and comfortable balancing your sympathetic, which is a simple stressful system, nervous system to uh, parasympathetic balance. Sorry about the honking <laughs> of the cars. Um, and then of course, we have our new uh, great product that is called Gut Integrity. And you as a participant of our today's webinar will get 15% off if you log in into our shop at drlanaklamenka.com and find this gut integrity product that includes all those uh, ingredients that I listed. It's a great product to have at home and take it either on a regular basis if you have some gut issues and leaky gut propensity or as needed. For example, many of my patients when they develop COVID or acute viral infection, or they are going through the acute stress, I would strongly recommend to use this product just temporarily to support nutritionally your gut lining to repair and rebuild quickly. And so, yes, yeah, so we are implementing this GI health program that includes evaluation with the questionnaires. We do this very individualized testing orders because Different patients need different testing. Not everybody is one size fits, right? Uh, one size fits all. Um, so we definitely recommend some supplements, lifestyle intervention. And then, of course, we are following up with appointments and retesting. All of my patients will get a small amount of homework to do and work with my health coaches, either individually or and in group visits. So that's very, very important. So make sure if you're here and you suspect that you need support uh, in treating your leaky gut, feel free to call us and schedule a discovery call or sign up for my newsletter. We always publish interesting article and announcement or follow us on Instagram. And uh, just to remind you, a lot of these products that are my new product are geared towards healthy digestion and stress release and reducing the inflammation in the gut level. This is your um, Hist Digest, an enzyme that breaks down their um, histamine naturally present in the food because some of us do lose this ability and get a lot of bloating. I always recommend people to just try one uh, bottle and see if you feel better. It might be a histamine issue that you're having difficulty with. Or if you're not sleeping well, or you feel tight and stressed, this Neuromag um, magnesium in the powder that I use on a daily basis, just one scoop of it, melted in the half glass of water taken before bedtime or during the stressful day, always helps me to uh, take the stress level down. And of course, the super absorbable omega-3 fatty acids. Remember, omega-3 is amazing and quenching the inflammation and preventing inflammation from escalation. So everyone should be on omega-3 fatty acids. Don't forget, next week we'll be doing their just live Q&A with uh, me. Uh, and you can log in and ask any question you want. So please look for the announcements. And it will be next Friday at 4 p.m. 
We do have, just as just a little plug, for our new IV room. If you haven't experienced yet the IV in our office, take advantage of this um, first-time client um, offer, which is uh, almost half a price. And I'll tell you, it's amazing when you get a bolus of the nutrients. It, honestly, you get so much more uh, benefits because you're bypassing the gut that might be compromised and you're not absorbing your nutrients properly. But giving intravenous nutrients help you to recuperate much faster. I recently had a COVID, my second COVID, and it was sluggish and, of course, tired. Four days into the process, I got my nutritional Myers cocktail. By the end of the day, I was going through my day with no problem. So the power of nutritional IV is really out there. And so please experience it uh, for yourself if you haven't yet. And remember, friends don't want friends to go to the bad doctors. So if you have friends who are suffering from autoimmune disorders or feeling fatigue and the conventional medicine doesn't find the answers for them, send them to us. We are open to the new client and we would always greatly appreciate any referrals. And thank you so much for attending today as uh, your, my little token of appreciation. Uh, we sending you uh, this um 10% off code, use it on our website, uh, on our e-store at shop.elianaklimek.com. Uh, and you can shop stocks site-wide with this code and get a 10% off.